We've talked about the mole concept, the fact that we can count particles by their mass. So one mole, one container that holds 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd parts, otherwise referred to as an Avogadro's number of parts, 602 heptillion particles, always has a mass that correlates to its value on the periodic chart. So a mole of hydrogen atoms weighs one gram. A mole of oxygen atoms weighs 16 grams. Now each of those are diatomic molecules in nature. So oxygen gas, which is O2, would weigh 32 grams. So we have a way to compare or know exactly how many particles there are by weighing them because of this mole concept. Well, the mole concept also extends to gases in a different way. So moles in the volume of gas are related in this way, that a mole of any gas, whether it was hydrogen gas, which is lighter, or oxygen gas, which is heavier, carbon dioxide, which is even a little heavier, um, any gas, if it's under certain conditions, will always take up the same amount of volume, which is 22.4 liters of space. Okay, so if I have a box that's 22.4 liters big, and I have just one gas in there, even if I have atmospheric gas, uh, I would have a one mole of the mixture of everything that's in the air. Uh, if it was, if I sucked out all the air and then just pumped in hydrogen or oxygen or carbon dioxide or helium. If it takes up 22.4 liters of space, then that's one mole, only if it's under certain conditions. And those certain conditions are what we call standard temperature and pressure, otherwise known as STP. So STP is pressure of one atmosphere, a sea level atmosphere, 14 pounds per square inch, uh, 8.31 kilopascals, 760 millimeters of mercury. It's all the same amount of pressure, just different rulers, different ways to measure it. And a temperature of zero degrees Celsius, which of course you can also talk about in terms of Kelvin, that's 273 Kelvin. So any gas, doesn't matter how heavy it is, how light it is, how big it is, how small it is, because gas is mostly empty space, will always take up, when it's at STP, 22.4 liters of volume. So we have these connections, which you've seen in lots of different textbooks. You see it on the web, so it's nothing new. I can't take credit for it, what I call a mole map. The primary relationship here is a mole is defined as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Any, a mole of any substance is going to weigh its mass in grams from the chart, what we call its molar mass. And so if it's a pure element, it's just what the value is on the chart. If it's a compound, we add up how many of each element there are based on its mass. But we figure out its molar mass. How heavy is this thing? How heavy is one mole that would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd parts? Now I've added the other relationship where if it's a gas, only if it's a gas, and under those conditions, STP, one atmosphere, zero degrees Celsius, if that's the case and it's a gas, it will take up 22.4 liters of space. Notice I drew this so that all roads lead to mole. The mole is the connecting concept. We can measure in a lab by putting things on a balance. We can measure based on a container size how much gas there is if it's under these conditions. What we can't do directly is count how many particles, but it's that relationship that's really important for us to understand the law of conservation of mass and the law of conservation of matter in a chemical equation. And so the mole is what allows us to see that relationship, measure that relationship, calculate with that relationship. So the fundamental skills here are, if I know particles, if I divide by the value of Avogadro's number, I know what fraction of a mole or how many moles of that substance I have. If I put it on a balance and I know how many grams there are, using the periodic chart, I can figure out how many moles there are by dividing by the molar mass. So notice I set this up. Anytime you're converting from moles to something, you're multiplying by a value. If you're going to particles, the value is always the same because that's the definition.
If it's a volume of a gas at STP, it just so happens it's still always the same number, 22.4 liters. The only one that's always different is molar mass because everything weighs something different. Bricks and feathers do not weigh the same. I have a ton of each, they both weigh a ton, but I have different amounts of them. If I have the same amount, bricks are gonna weigh more and I'm gonna have less of them. Feathers weigh less. So if I have the same amount, I'm gonna have a much bigger mass of bricks. So I have to calculate that to convert. But I can convert any one of, if I know one of these and I have a periodic chart, I can get to any other one. And that's gonna be a key skill that we'll do some practice around and you need to become competent in as we go forward to talk about what goes on in a chemical reaction in terms of the amounts. How much I put in determines how much I'm gonna get out. You know that as a concept. We're actually gonna be able to do the math that's involved with that in a chemical reaction.